Thanks for checking out this no spoilers movie review video. Uh, this is for the 2005 film The Devil's Rejects by Rob Zombie. Uh, and this review is per the request of a subscriber, actually longtime subscriber, I can say uh, Uncle Pete, not my actual uncle. That's his name on YouTube. It's Uncle Pete. So this one's for you, Uncle Pete. Um, <clears throat> let's get to it. 2005, Devil's Rejects. So I saw this film in the theater when it originally came out. I remember really liking it, but I haven't watched it since. So about 14 years now have passed, and I hadn't seen it. So it's always interesting to go revisit films that you remember really liking, especially when you were much younger, because things change. And I feel like watching this again, I still like it, and I still like, like it a decent amount, but I don't think I like it as much as I remember liking it when it was in the theater. And maybe that's, I actually don't like it as much, or I was just, you know, over time kind of working it up more in my mind. I don't know. But still, I enjoy it. It's a good film. So let's get into it. So immediately you're hit with the fact, I got my notes, immediately you're hit with the fact that it feels a lot and looks a lot like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You really feel like Rob Zombie takes a lot of his aesthetic and a lot of his cues for how to do horror from Toby Hooper, obviously, who did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a very gritty scenery. It's very dirty, and he leeches a lot of color out of the film as well, which I think works for the story that he's doing and for the setting he uses. It's an interesting setting uh, for that reason, and all those things are very much in common with Texas Chainsaw. So the whole time you're watching, you're kind of like, this feels like Texas Chainsaw, but it does its own thing. I will say the plot, the storyline, everything, it's not complicated, it's not anything new, it's just how is it executed. So, the thing with Rob Zombie in general as a director, like, I have a lot of respect for Rob Zombie as a person because he's a very creative person. And his creativity spans many, many things. Uh, one of the big things being, you know, obviously he was very well known for his music with uh, White Zombie. And then he ended up getting into film. So the fact that someone like that has so much creative output and is so motivated and does so much, I find very, very inspiring. And I have a lot of respect for Rob Zombie for that reason. As a filmmaker, <laughs> I like some of his stuff. I dislike most of his stuff. I will say The Devil's Rejects is by far his best film. I don't think anything else has really come all that close. Didn't really like House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, I stopped watching the first Halloween remake he did after like 20 minutes or so. It was so egregiously bad. I haven't heard anything good about that one or the second one from anyone. Um, I did see Lords of Salem, which I actually kind of liked. I, I didn't like love it or anything, but I liked it. I, I found it decent. So that might be my second place film of his after um, The Devil's Rejects. And with Three from Hell coming up, which is the third film in the trilogy of House of Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, um, this is a good time for me to be doing this review and just revisiting that film. So hopefully Three from Hell is good. I don't know. A trailer came out and you really can't tell anything from the trailer because the trailer is pretty much non-existent. I know part of the reason for that is Rob Zombie himself really hates the fact that trailers usually give so much of the story away, and I'm with him on that. I think it's terrible that trailers give up so much. Sometimes you see these trailers and you're just like, I already saw the film, I don't even need to see it because the trailer gave me everything. So that's why his trailer for Three From Hell is so minimal. But at the same time, it doesn't really show much, so you're kind of like, what's going to happen? Also, the level of involvement that Sid Haig can have in Three From Hell, I don't know what that can be because he's obviously aging and he's not been doing great. If you've seen him at conventions, which I have in the past few years, he's not looking in the best of health. So I pretty much guarantee that his involvement in Three From Hell is going to be pretty limited. That's just a guess. But anyway, uh, let me get back to... So the actual review got sidetracked, although it is related. So um, so one of the things that kind of gets me in the beginning of this film is the fact that there are so many extreme close-ups in it. I It can work at times, but when you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, it actually gets kind of annoying because you want to be able to focus on things when you're watching a film. And Rob Zombie just seemed to really love extreme close-ups, and he went overboard with them, especially in the beginning half of the film. 
And that's one of the things in general with this is that I feel like the beginning half of the film lacks focus. It's more of like he's playing around. Uh, he just wanted to do crazy things with the script. He just wanted to do crazy things with his directing. And then it feels like once he, you hit that halfway point, there's, he, he calms down a bunch. He stops doing a lot of the more crazy slash annoying things that he was doing in the first half of the film. And he focuses. He gets very focused, calms down. And from about the ha halfway point till the end, it's a much different film, in my opinion, and it's much better done. It's better put together. It's a more compelling story. Uh, just that first half seems like all over the place. You're like, I don't even know what's going on. It's like everything in the kitchen sink type deal. Um, so it's weird because this is kind of like two, two filmmakers made this in a sense. Like a very unrestrained, wild filmmaker for the first half, and then someone who like got it together and is focused and is like, I know how to make film, boom, 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 this is how we do it for the second half. So the second half is where my enjoyment really kicks in with the film. The first half, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. So that's just my feeling on it. But it's better to have it that way than to have it the reverse where the end, the end is like all messed up because then people finish on a down note and you just be like, oh, that sucked. So just saying that. Uh, let's state one of the obvious things. Sherry Moon Zombie is awful as an actress. She is terrible. He uh, Rob Zombie puts her in every film because that's his wife. I think it's idiotic when directors, uh, well, filmmakers in general do that stuff. Um, get the best person for the job. And I think he did with a lot of the roles in this film. And I think that there's some weak dialogue in this film. There's some weak writing with the script. But I think a lot of the times that's overcome by the actors because the actors seem to be having a really good time and they nailed their parts for the most part, except Sherry Moon Zombie, who, like I said, is a terrible actress. So had that role been cast differently, I think this film could be even better than it is. And I know there are a lot of people who say the same thing, like Sherry Moon Zombie, she's terrible. I know a lot of people who say... She's a bad actress, but I like looking at her. Well, I don't care about the looking at her thing because I want to see a good movie. So get her out of these films. It's terrible. She She's not good. She doesn't have the chops. You can make a much better film if you put someone in there who has the ability to do the role. So, just went nuts. So, some of my p favorite performances, some of my favorite actors in this film, and they do wonderful jobs. Bill Mosley does a very nice job. Sid Haig does one of the best jobs in this. He is a joy to watch on screen. Also, Ken Foree. Ken Foree's character is so well played by him. You can tell he's just chewing it up. He is loving it. And William Forsythe is probably the strongest actor in this film. Uh, I've seen William Forsythe in a few things, and I kind of feel like this might be his best role. He really brought a lot to it, and he... He's awesome on the screen. So all those people I just named did a really good job. And the supporting cast is fine, too. They did decent jobs. Everyone but Sherry Moon Zombie did a good to great job. And I feel like that's where this film, if these certain actors were not in this film and it was lesser people, this film really would have fallen apart, in my opinion. Because like I said, there's some weak writing in this. And I feel like the actors overcome that with their great performances. Just saying. Uh, the soundtrack. This is one of the best things about this film. The soundtrack is ridiculously good. It matches up so well with the environment, the scenery, the shots, the characters, the overall story. The soundtrack is pretty much perfection, in my opinion, as far as, far as this film goes. Um, I was thinking about it, at, and as the film was, was wrapping up at the end with the credits going, I was thinking... In my opinion, this may be one of the best soundtracks for a film. Not like soundtrack on its own, like soundtrack with the film, like whole experience. Just saying, great. Um, Rob Zombie is, is a type of guy who writes over the top. And you really see that in this film, especially in the first half of it, where he's just like, he's trying to throw everything out there. He's like over the top, over the top. His premises are usually over the top, the violence is over the top, the sexuality is over the top, and the way he writes dialogue is over the top. Which takes me to one of my other issues with him, is that he writes the dialogue for all the characters the same, 
he writes almost all the characters kind of very similar so he doesn't have a lot of range when it comes to ability to create different characters uh they all speak the same they all say the same type of stuff they're all hypersexual and very violent um everyone in this film is a terrible person pretty much and they all talk about sex constantly which to me gets tiresome i know there's some people out there who are like well i love it there's some really good parts where it fits but for the most part i think it's distracting and it's it detracts from the actual story and the film itself i view things like that as well as profanity like the over the overuse of profanity as crutches for writers uh, I feel like a lot of the times you're putting in profanity and you're putting in like all this sexuality like over the top because you don't know what else to do, because you can't come up with something else, or because you're lazy and you don't want to. It is bad writing, in my opinion, when, when it's done this way. And um, it's just something that bothers me personally. Uh, I can take a certain amount of profanity, especially if it fits the character, but the fact that in this film every character uses profanity to the nth degree just takes away from it and it makes me think it's lazy writing it's like you don't know you can't write dialogue effectively so you do that and i actually think that in a lot of instances if you strip a lot of the profanity out of this film and just condense that dialogue i think people would find it better like it would be more impactful what's being said because there really are some nice moments of of dialogue writing in it but then they get drowned out by profanity, like before it and after it. it they, it's like they get sandwiched and they, it gets lost, in a sense. So I just wish that he would, you know, rein it in a little bit with the profanity. Just rein it in. Like, better writing is not using it. It's totally a crutch. It's totally a crutch. Anyway. Um, do, 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 do. It, and one of the things, I was talking about the sexuality. The over-sexuality of this film also makes me kind of roll my eyes like I'm I'm good with it to a certain point but when you just feel like you have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it it's just like okay can we do something else at this point and the fact that the over sexualization of women in it um you know it might not bother people out there it, it's something that kind of bothers me because when you're using women as just sex objects which is basically what this film does and a lot of Rob Zombie's films it's just like Oh, here's female characters. You know they're going to be in there just for the sex appeal. Uh, it's It gets tiresome. Like, I want good characters for every character in it. I want all the characters to matter. I want them all to be worth something in the context of the story. So when he has a lot of these characters in there that it's just like, oh, they're going to get naked. They're going to talk about sex and be sexy. And it's... A, it just, it gets old for me. It gets old really, really fast. And with this film in particular, unless the character is old or fat, they're, and they're female, they're sex appeal. Like, it's purely sex appeal. So, it, it's it's lazy. Once again, it's, it's lazy writing, in my opinion. Which you find that a lot with Rob Zombie, to be honest. Um, do, 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 do shaky cam there's a lot of shaky cam used in this film i think a lot of the times it works because it gives kind of this the there's there's moments where it's like it's very intense it's gritty things are confusing so it adds to that with the film but there are times where it just goes on a little too long or it's done a little too much and then you're just kind of like i i'm losing track of some of the stuff that's going on here but also i'm starting to get a little nauseous you have to be careful with, with the use of shaky cam, which is why I don't like a lot of found footage films because they tend to go over the top with a lot of that shaky cam work and it can make me nauseous. The original Cloverfield film made me very, very nauseous and I will never watch that movie again for that reason. So the shaky cam, get on that. What's very interesting about this film to me is that everyone is terrible in it and it just it puts you in a weird situation as an audience member because you naturally want to root for somebody. And when you're looking, when you're critically thinking and you're like, well, like all these characters are not good. Like they're all terrible to different degrees, but they're all terrible. And who do I root for? Like you feel conflicted. So um, that's cool. Like that's actually a good thing. I think in writing is make people feel conflicted, make them feel weird about the situation they're in. I like that. So it works. Uh, do, 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 do. yeah, 
like I was saying, like the movie starts and it seems to kind of like just meander, not really have a focus. That halfway point and out, it's it's very focused. Things calm down. It looks like a much different film, and I like that portion of it. Uh, the very end is really good. Uh, I really enjoy the very end, especially with the musical accompaniment. Uh, but the one thing is, this is another instance of too many super close-up shots being used. That I, I understand that, that there are issues where directors will kind of like fall in love with a certain thing they like to do. Or like, this is a fun shot to do. I really like this. And then they just go overboard with it. Restraint. Get some restraint. Rob Zombie's not really known for it, but get some restraint. Anyway, um... I feel like that's all I have to say about the film. I did enjoy rewatching it. I really did. For the first half of it, I was like, Ugh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. And then the last half happened, and I was like, ah, this is the good portion of it. This is what I like about it. So I can't go crazy on a good rating for this, to be honest, because it's, it's half and half, really. So out of five stars with halves in play, I'm going to give it a three and a half stars. I do recommend it if nobody's ever seen it. You should definitely see it if you haven't seen it. I think it's good. Like I said, it's definitely Rob Zombie's best film. I don't know if he'll ever get back there, to be honest. And I hope so for Three From Hell, but I have this feeling that it's not going to be the case. But let's keep our fingers crossed, people. We'll, we'll check it out. Uh, Uncle Pete, hopefully you enjoyed this review. I know you said this is like your favorite film or one of your favorite films, so... I know that you would do probably like five star or four and a half or four star or something like that. So sorry, I, I know part of this, at least part of this review is probably a little bit of a letdown to you. I'm sure you wanted me to really love this film and I love portions of it, but overall it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. So, but three and a half stars, pretty good. Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out until next time. Keep it brutal.